So this is our freshwater explorer test kit and I'm going to show you how to use it today. When you open it up, the first thing you want to do is get out your field guide. It has everything I'm going to go through today and much more details that you'll want to review before you go out testing. We're going to be following the quick start guide um, that's on uh, page three. So as you can see in the guide, there's lots of photos and instructions on how to do your tests. Also in your bag, you're going to notice uh, your goodie bag and you have a magnet to remind you of our uh, monthly testing, an envelope to send us your used test strips, calibration solution for a next season for your conductivity meter, as well as stickers, badges, and postcards. You'll want to use that because if you're like me, when you go out, people are going to ask you what you're doing and you'll want to share um, the good work that you're doing with those around you. Next, we encourage you to record all the information you collect on our website at app.waterrangers.ca. You can do that with our mobile apps um, as well as record them on your notepad and then put it on the website when you return home. We also always recommend that you test with a friend and it's a really great way to work together. So in this kit, we include your main sample cup as well as a spare one, a conductivity meter, test strips, dissolved oxygen, a secchi disc, a thermometer with a, a handle, a disposal cup for your dissolved oxygen, a reacher stick, which I'll show you how to use in a second, and a towel to dry everything off before you put it in your kit. So one of the most important things when water testing is choosing your sample location. You want to pick a location that you can return to often and we test on the last Sunday of every month. So you want to make sure that it's a place you can commit to go to. You also want to make sure that it's accessible and easy to, to find. So look for a place where you can have landmarks and know that you can return to the exact same location. Depending on the type of location you're at, it's going to, it's going to be very different. As you can see here, we're on the side of a water body. If you're in the middle of a water body, say a lake, usually you want to pick the deepest point. We have more tips on that on our website. The first thing you want to do when you're recording the observation for the day is to note the weather. As you can see here, it is very hot and sunny. And you also want to note the weather in the last 24 hours. Precipitation is so important for water quality and we notice big changes after big rain events. So you really want to note that down. We're also going to be taking our air temperature using your thermometer and we're going to hang it in a shady spot in a tree while we do the rest of our tests. I'm going to hang it at least a meter above the ground and leave it there while I'm testing and don't forget to get it when you're finished. All right, now we're finally ready to do our water test. We're going to get our reacher stick, may look familiar, um, extend it and we're going to take our sample cup and we're going to attach it like so. A lot of people like to do it sort of like that, tighten the little knob and then we're going to use it to reach down into the water. It's really important that you rinse your cup three times in the water you'll be testing it gets rid of any of the residue that remains on your cup from your last test or from maybe your hands if you touch the cup. All right, and now we're going to take our sample about 15 centimeters below the surface. Reach down. There we go, we got our cup. We can take it off or one of our volunteers suggested make it into a little stand like so which I think is super cute. And we always love hearing from our volunteers about new ideas they have um, on how to use our test kit. Some of our older meters have a cap that you need to remove. Our newer uh, conductivity meters don't have a cap. So that's one less step that you need to do. To turn it on, we're gonna press the top button once. It's gonna cycle through and then stop. Okay, go for it. Okay. You can see here, that the top number has a little US and it's flashing or it might not be flashing. And once this top number stabilizes, you're going to record that number. 
It is 331 microsiemens per centimeter. And the bottom number is your water temperature. You can see it's very hot. It is 30.2. Now you may notice that the number fluctuates a little bit. You want it to stabilize, but as long as it's not moving around too much, take the average of the number there. The last thing you may notice, especially if you're in an urban creek, you may see a number like 1.32. That means that your number is higher than a thousand and we're going to need to do the conversion. And you'll be able to know that that's happened because the US at the top here have turned into an MS. Now here we don't have that problem, but in urban streams that happens quite frequently. So if it says something like 1.32, the reading would be 1,320. All right, so we're finished conductivity. We're going to press the top button to turn it off and put it in there. The next thing we're going to do is use our test strips. These are a test strip that measure chlorine, pH, alkalinity, and hardness. And you're gonna compare the colors on the back. Open up your container, shake one out. It's very important that you have dry hands for this. The reason being, any moisture that gets in this container is gonna ruin the rest of the strip. So very, very important. All right, I'm gonna dip it in for two seconds. One, two, take it out and we're gonna wait 20 seconds and then compare on the back here vertically. You can see here, we have a reading between zero and 0.5 for chlorine. So we'd record 0.25, halfway between. Our pH is all the way at 8.4. Our alkalinity is 80 and our hardness looks to be between 100 and 200 to me, and that is 150. Comparing colors with the test strips can be hard. We're actually doing a study on machine learning to read your test strip with your phone. So if you lay your test strip onto this little guide that's included in your goodie bag, you can take a photo and you can participate in helping us read the test strip. The next test we're going to do is dissolved oxygen. It's important to keep this in the dark when you're not using it. The first thing that you're going to do is take an ampoule out of the container here. For this test, you're gonna to wanna to notice the white line here. That's a weak point in the glass. We're going to be using this cup. And as you can see here, there's little ridges in the bottom. When I take my sample, I'm gonna put this in one of those ridges and pull towards myself. It's very important to do this test quickly. As soon as I take the water out of the, out of the water body I'm in, it's being exposed to the air and getting oxygenated. So timing is of the essence. So you can see I've put it in the little area there and I'm just gonna pull it gently towards myself. You can see it fills up with the liquid. And I'm gonna take it out and let the bubble go up and down two times. There it goes. I'm gonna slowly pour the water out, leaving the tip in the container to put in my garbage can. We need to wait two minutes for the color to develop. It's okay if you wait longer, but it has to be at least two minutes for the color to completely develop. All right, our two minutes is up. It's time to do our comparison. The best way to do your comparison is to pull out your comparison chart like this. And then what I like to do is I like to start at the bottom here and keep moving my little ampoule up, shade it with your, with your body a little bit, tilt it, and take your sunglasses off. And we're gonna find out where it is. It's closest to eight. To put your comparison chart back in, put it under the little nub at the top here and press down. To dispose of your uh, ampoule, we include a little garbage can where you can put it in here. Our last test is our Secchi disc. This is a tool that's been used for about 200 years to measure water clarity. We measure water clarity by dropping it in the water and then measuring the length of the rope in meters. Another one is really important that you don't wear your sunglasses for. All your color ones, you wanna make sure that you don't have your sunglasses on. Okay, this is not very clear water. 
So I can already not see it. And you can see it's only about 30 centimeters down. And since we measure in meters, we would measure that as 0.3. Now, if you can see the bottom, you can also use this to measure water depth. The rope, though, is only about 20 meters, so this isn't suitable for deep spots. I pull mine up, and then I reel it in while I'm on shore. All right, now that we're finished our test, we can read our air temperature, which is 34 degrees. All right, so we're finished our tests. It's really important that you record all your information on our website. We check all of the quality of your data um, and to make sure that it's good, and then we share it with others. So please make sure that you're really diligent about putting your data on our website. As I pack my kit, I'm gonna dry everything off and then continue on to my next location. Have fun out there to water testing, and if you have any questions, please get in touch with us. We'd love to help you.